Hello everybody, welcome to the channel today. Today I'm going to do sort of a nostalgic look at Panzerblitz and uh, show you what's in the box and uh, what you can expect to get if you should happen to purchase this off of eBay or Board Game Geeks or any other place that you can purchase this now. But uh, this is the Panzerblitz by Avalon Hill and this came out in 1970 and it was one of the top games for them it, it was um, pretty much everybody played this game back then now i got into war gaming about 76 and um, so this is my actual original box here and you can see this quite quite worn uh, i bought this game in late 70s so this was actually, I believe it was the second edition that came out, or the second printing. The first printing looks just like it. Everything is exactly the same. Uh, the major difference is that this one has a slip cover. So the box actually comes out like this, and this box inside has your combat chart on uh, the inside of it. And I picked up this one off of, uh, I believe it was eBay. Uh, found a, a pretty decent one and the box is actually in better shape than my original one here. Now my original one, the sheet that you saw over there, we actually always put it in, inside the box here, inside the lid. So we'd stand it up at the end of the table there and uh, when we play we'd, we'd have that there. Now my game has uh, all the pieces in these custom made uh, 3D print boxes that I made for them. So we'll take a look at the other box that I purchased off of eBay so that you can see what it would look like when you actually bought one or purchased one from somebody, what, what should be in there. So like I said, this, this one came in a sleeve and I think that what, what they found out is number one, the sleeve was a little bit more costly but also this tend to wear out pretty quick and uh, you can download this on online now uh, easy easy enough to get but we'll open it up here and uh, the older versions had an insert which I actually have sitting in there upside down Let's put that the right way for you so they have a little plastic insert there and uh, your geomorphic maps were on top now back then all the maps came mounted now it's a special um, rarity if you get them mounted we didn't have paper mats it mats as maps as a matter of fact I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute but everything was mounted and uh, you can see that these map boards were made so that they could be put in any configuration they weren't a real fancy design uh, they weren't nothing um, you know that was that's like what you can get today on like um you know panzer from gmt or um you know last hundred yards or any other games they just have such beautiful artwork on it although they're similar but these were very simple maps but the main thing was the play style of panzer blitz panzer blitz uh was the first one to incorporate silhouette pieces uh pieces that actually have uh, a picture of what actually had pieces that had silhouettes of what they represented. And so in this case here, you can see that this one came with all the pieces inside this tray and they were actually, uh, some of them were still in the, uh, still had to be punched out, uh, but they were inside this tray and uh, I punched them all out, rounded the corners and put them in bags to separate them all. So have them all in there for easy sorting when you needed them and inside we have a little booklet here this little booklet here um, this is the campaign analysis and this had uh, information on the setup of the game and some of the historical background to it uh, how to make battalions and stuff additional units that you could add to it uh, the um, units in the Russian army and the units in the German army here and back here we just have some designer notes and then we have 
armored vehicle profile and data sheets back here. And these are the actual profiles. You can see this book hasn't been opened much. These are the actual profiles of what's on the front of all of our counters here. So this is kind of a cool little book. And then you have rules of play. Now the rules of play, they were generally on a large sheet here. And you can see that most Avalon Hill games were like this. They eventually changed over, but a lot of them were like this here. And um, you can see that they have the, all the units here and how many pieces you get in each one. So the nice thing about this is that when you order it offline, uh, you can always check and make sure that you got all the pieces. They have a terrain effect chart here. They talk about movement and stacking over here. On the back side, you have all your combat, spotting, uh, wrecked vehicles, all of that. And then we have uh, positional defenses that you can lay out there. Game process, and you can see that it has the inner box lid right there. It shows exactly what I was talking about. And it gives you game credits, and it has optional rules. It has indirect fire, um, ammunition rules, Panzer Blitz Assault, experimental indirect fire, impulse movement, and return fire. So it also has your two little sheets down here that are on the back of the box. So if that happened to get worn off, you still had access to that. So as you can see, this one was not played much at all. Whoever had it sort of bought it and put it all in, in here and didn't play it much. Now, in addition, not only was uh, Panzer Blitz one of the first games to have geomorphic maps, but they were also one of the first games to have uh, different scenario cards that you could use. And uh, so in here, I think we have 13 of them, or 12 of them, 12 of them. 12 um, scenarios, and if you go on Board Game Geeks, uh, you can find that you can find a, a whole bunch of other scenarios. And there's also a Panzer Blitz book that I have here someplace that's actually quite expensive now and uh, worth some money. And that's why I sort of have it hidden in a different spot. But um, that book has a whole bunch of other scenarios in it and a lot of articles from the General Magazine. And you can, of course, get General Magazines and find out all kinds of information about this game. Um, talks about an introductory game, Situation 13, Designing Your Own, how to do that. And it talks about that here, uh, using the uh, situation cards, how, how everything works. And it also has an example of play here, a couple examples of play, and a line of sight, how to figure out line of sight there. And then in here, we also have uh, Congratulations, talks about the different games uh, that they had at the time. Avalon Hill and, uh, you know, 25 cents and we'll send you a sample issue of the general. The general was 20, 25 cents. It was dollar value. Um, I think it was $4 a year is what it cost to get the general uh, back then. So it was relatively cheap. But then the games were also cheap too. And it gives their different games, whether they're introductory, intermediate, or tournament style games as to how, um, how advanced they were. So that's what comes in the box with Panzer Blitz when you order it online or when you decide to get uh, such a game. Now you can play it on Vassal. Um, you don't really need the game if you wanted to play it, but I thought I'd give you a little history about how we used to play these games. Now, it was really hard to find opponents for these games. Um, if you lived in certain areas, they were almost impossible to find. So you ended up doing play by mail. And um, like I said before, all of your map boards were mounted. Now the problem with that is that when you play by mail, you'd have to set up everything. You have to set up the map board, set up everything. And then you would make your move, write it all down, send it off to your opponent. And then, uh, you know, it would be a month maybe before you get another response from them. So it was kind of difficult to leave in one spot. So one of the things that we used to do, and I'll show you this here, is, and, and this actually has a post date of 1980. March 21st, 1980, when I ordered these. But at the time, you could actually order the paper part maps of Panzer Blitz. And as you can see here, here are all three of those maps. And you can tell they've been in that role for quite a while now. Uh, so what I did was I actually took these mats, these maps, I should say, and um, I used magnets and put them up on the side of my refrigerator. And then my refrigerator, uh, I had 
all my pieces in these counter clips right here. And these are magnetic counter clips that I would take and mount the pieces into. Now the only bad part about these is that um, they would they fit rather tight when you slide them in here they fit rather tight and they do damage the edges so when you look at my piece you'll see that they have uh, damaged edges on them. so I'd slide them in this and, and these would be able to uh, stack quite a bit you can see that they're pretty they're pretty solid <laughs> as I flip it off they're pretty solid and uh, they would stack onto each other so if you had a stack of uh, units in one one square you could easily do that and I would just put this on the side of the refrigerator and have my game there and then when I get um, the game back I could just play it off the side of my refrigerator or you know move it down onto something else now uh, at one point I believe I got a piece of um, um, metal and just made a board that mounted this on so that I could just slide underneath the bed and that way I could keep the game set up so what Avalon Hill used to offer was something like this and this was well this is actually what they offered right here uh, Panzer Blitz play-by-mail play sheet and you would put your situation, the movement for player and the turn number that you were on and you would just write in where all of your stuff was at on this map here. Now certain things you know you'd have a stack of something you couldn't write it all on one little square there so you'd put like A on this and then on the back here I'll just rip this off here so that you can see it on the back here you'd put attacking units you put what was in those attacking units or what was in that I'm sorry down here location you put the square and what units were in there and so that way the person would know that you know you had two tanks and an infantry or whatever whatever it may be that was in that square and so you'd list all of that on the back side here so you'd have a reference so you might say you know the square would be AA1234 AA4 and you'd have a mark there and on the back they would look and you'd have it listed as square AA4 and you'd have whatever units were there. So we generally would use the number that is down at the bottom like 941, 942 we'd use that number or you could use 14888 uh, to describe this particular tank here. But most of the time we just use that number right down there at the bottom and we'd put that number in these little squares along here for those pieces and that would represent those pieces on that square here. Now we didn't have cell phones or easy way to take pictures you know we, we I don't even think we had one hour photo back then so you couldn't take a picture of the thing and just send them a, a picture uh, that wouldn't work uh, plus it'd be you know it cost you more so we would just mark all that and write that down so it took some time to do this and then on top of that we didn't have online dice rollers or um, we couldn't you know uh, FaceTime to show the dice that we were rolling or anything like that so what we did was we had the situation on the back here attack four and it'd be you know like German player turn number three and you have your first attack here and you put your attacking units like you would say 941 and 942 is attacking uh, units and if it was a Russian unit let's say it was this Russian this Russian unit here which is the SU-76 so you could put SU-76811 and uh, you put the type of attack it was what the odds are any plus and minus on there then what you'd actually do is everybody got a paper back then and you would have stock market reports in every day and you would pick a day that uh, you'd have the closing transition uh, transitional date right here and you put whatever stock that you felt would be moving up and down and you put that stock there sales in a hundred and then you got the results there so most of the time um, you know you could either uh, designate it you use the last number to one to six and then you know it would cycle back or um, you know if, if it went one to six then you could go um, let's say it was ten uh, then you would use the next number there to create a dice so whatever dice roll was under six or six or under um, would be that and then uh, the person would put the result there and you would also have a copy of this you put the result there and then they would send when they send theirs back they would send a copy of this back with them to show you what results they got and you'd have what results that you had and you, you'd confirm whether they were both good and um, correct on that so that was the way that we played and that was the way that I played a lot of these I still have three of these pads uh, left I think I went through one of them uh, playing a couple play-by-mail games and they took uh, upwards of a year to finish uh, even with a, with a quick game 
but uh, that that was how how we had to do it and uh, that was how I found a lot of my a lot of my opponents so I have a I have a number of these I have some one for uh, Panza leader and I also have one for I believe Luftwaffe which you'll see later on when I talk about Panza leader and Luftwaffe but um, I just want to do a quick little nostalgia box opening and show you uh, how we worked with our games back back when these games were out. But this game is still a viable game today. It's still a very much a fun game. Uh, it became known as Panzer Bush because um, a lot of times if you if you ran a tank across all this clear, let's say you had a, a unit in in a, a square here and you ran it across all this clear terrain and hid in the forest, you couldn't shoot at it, which came kind of stupid. So then they developed opportunity fire as an option and so, so people would use opportunity fire so that when the tank ran across in the open you you would take a shot at it when it ran across in the open so i hope you enjoyed that uh, again this is one of my favorite games and this game um, actually led me to purchase this game right here so that game caused me to purchase this game because tell me they're not they don't look about the same so when I first when I got back into this uh, uh, about a year ago now maybe maybe not quite that long ago uh, maybe less than six months actually uh, I had to get this game because it looks so much like this one that I want to try it out and this one is a lot different than this one but it does have the same type of uh, feel to it as the, this particular game does too so um Panzer Blitz if you get a chance to pick one up they're relatively inexpensive there are a ton of them out there uh, but if you get a chance to pick up one, I would encourage you to do so. It's a fun game to play. And uh, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the nostalgic look at old games, old Avalon Hill games. And um, I plan on doing some more of these. So if you do like that, please give it a like down there. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel. It helps out quite a bit. And hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for joining me on this one. Take care.